Here now is Faith to Live By with Pastor Barber. The Apostle Paul was writing to the church in Corinth and in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11, he writes, For no man can lay a foundation other than the one which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Here is the full group to sing, the church's one foundation is Jesus Christ, her Lord. The Bible has the answer. You have provided the questions and we search God's holy word in order to find the answers. Question number one, are we disobeying God if we celebrate holidays like birthdays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and others? Jesus and the Apostle Paul give us excellent examples for Jesus himself went to Jerusalem at times of festival. And in Acts chapter 20 and verse 16, we read that the apostle Paul was hurrying back from Ephesus and Miletus to be in Jerusalem, if possible, we read, on the day of Pentecost. And so if we celebrate these things or think that we are disobeying God by celebrating certain days above others, then we have examples of our Lord as well as the Apostle Paul and others in the New Testament who celebrated special days in the calendar. I want to take you to Galatians chapter 4 and verses 10 and 11, first of all, and here the Apostle Paul, he says, you observe days and months and seasons and years. I fear for you that perhaps I have labored over you in vain. And that would seem to speak disparagingly about special days of the calendar. However, Galatians is all about how we are saved. And if we imagine 
that we are saved by keeping special days or that we uh, get special merit, that we please the Lord by uh, honoring special days, we are very much off the mark. This is not a contributing factor to our salvation. We are saved by God's grace. It is His gift, not our keeping of special days. In Colossians then, chapter 2 and verses 16 and 17, we read, Therefore, that no one is to act as your judge in regard to food or drink or in respect to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath day, things which are a mere shadow of what is to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. These two verses speak that the Apostle Paul is helping these who are already trusting in Christ, the church in Colossae, and he is saying to them also, look, whether you do or you don't celebrate these special times in the calendar, let no one be your judge. Let your own heart guide you. This is a non-essential. If you want to celebrate these things, go right ahead. If you do not, then make that your own decision and press ahead as such. Question number two. What language will we be speaking when we are in heaven? This is a very interesting question indeed. And I know that there are some people who would speak very quickly, tongue in cheek, for one language or another. But I want you to go with me all the way back to Genesis chapter 11. And here we have the account of the dividing of languages. At first, it seemed the whole world was speaking one language, but the people were coming together to build a tower in praise of man. And God comes down and he says, if this is what they have purpose to do, nothing will be impossible for them. And so we will both confuse their languages and scatter the peoples all over the world in judgment and yet in mercy, God restrains the evil that was in man's heart. So there was confusion and there was scattering in Genesis chapter 11. Then I want to take you to Revelation chapter 7 and verses 9 and 10. We read here, after these things, John says, I looked and behold, a great multitude, which no one could count from every nation and all tribes and peoples and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes and palm branches were in their hands. And they cry out with a loud voice saying, salvation to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Here we have a great crowd of people. And then the next two verses is the response of the angels giving praise to God. And here we have, rather than a confusing and a scattering, we have a clarifying and we have a gathering together of people. And whether they each continued to speak their own languages, they were understood by others. John as he writes this, as he hears what is taking place, he comprehends. And so the one Babel in Genesis 11, a scattering and a confusing Revelation 7, when we get to heaven, when we are gathered round the throne of God, we will have the privilege of comprehending others and understanding very clearly in that time of praising God. One more thing, I wonder whether the root question here is, will I need to have language lessons when I get to heaven? Because in this world, I've struggled with languages. I, I've not excelled in that, and I'm very sympathetic to that. Many people across the country, even with my own English, they, in their eagerness for grammatical clarity, they keep me humble in terms of pointing out the things where I go amiss. 
in Romans chapter 8 and verse 32, I think that this is a pertinent point. Do we need to have language classes? Well, Revel or Romans chapter 8 and verse 32 says, He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? And I believe that when we get to heaven, that just as God was able to scatter languages and confuse languages to take away the ability for people to understand one another, that we'll have a miraculous ability to understand those who in this world, we have never studied their language. You don't need to worry about language classes. The grace of God, the goodness of God, the gift of God, the free blessing of God, that will be there for each and every one of us. If you have a question for The Bible Has the Answer, we'd be glad to hear from you. Our mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. Ruth Lang now comes singing Jesus Loves Me, and that is followed by Terry and Tim Sturby singing Burdens Are Lifted at Calvary.
All of the music which is included on today's broadcast are included in this new CD, Jesus I Come. Our musicians have teamed up together to present a glorious package of music, 11 songs which I know you will enjoy. Five of the selections are of the full group, and the songs of the full group include Blessed Assurance, Sunlight, The Church's One Foundation, there is a fountain and Jesus I come and the other songs are by duets, solos, etc. Ask for your free copy of Jesus I come when you write to us this week. Our mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. Or you may call us toll free 1-833- 367-3852. Our website, Faith to Live By, has a means of you contacting us and making your request for a CD known, or you may also freely download the audio files from the website and have it available immediately without waiting for Canada Post to do its work. Glad to see these things put to use not only when the broadcast is on your television or you're listening by radio, but you might also have it immediately or coming very soon. We now have the full group singing, Jesus, I Come.
Just a few days ago, I was writing a letter to a childhood friend of mine who has been suffering very greatly. And I agonized to write that letter and to try to be an encouragement and a strength. Peter is writing to people who are suffering. Peter himself is no stranger to suffering, just as the Apostle Paul and the other leaders of the first century church. And the believers there, they were well acquainted, so much so that the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ was the blessed hope that motivated them and kept them moving forward, that one glad day and soon they were going to see the Lord Jesus Christ who had saved them, who had redeemed them, who had brought them out of death itself to walk with him. First Peter is written to people who were suffering, people who were going through trials and difficulties of enormous proportions and for whom the future may have held even greater difficulties and challenges. At the conclusion of chapter 4, this is how Peter writes to them. Make sure, make sure that none of you suffers as a murderer or thief or evildoer or troublesome meddler. There are difficulties which we most certainly bring upon ourselves, difficulties which rightly have their consequences. But Peter, he says, look, for you who are blood-bought, you who are aliens and strangers because you have been brought into the family of God and into the kingdom of God, you are citizens of heaven, the very last thing that you should be accused and charged with and shown to be guilty of is that you are a murderer, a thief, an evildoer of whatever kind, or even a troublesome meddler, someone who is sticking their nose where they have no business being. Verse 16, but, Peter says, if anyone suffers as a Christian, they suffer because of the name of Jesus Christ. This is what Peter says. He is not to be ashamed. There is no shame in that. We need not hang our heads. He says, but is to glorify God in this name in this situation, in this time, in these circumstances, the name of God is to be glorified in our suffering. What a change, what a difference that is. Rather than seeking the quickest means of escape, we say, Lord, in the situation which you have divinely placed me in, for your own reasons, I may not know anything about it, but for your own reasons, I pray, Lord, that your name would be glorified. And may I bear the name of Christ, for that is what Christian was, what Christian means. In the first century, the believers were first called Christians in Antioch. It was a slur at first. It was a chide. It was a, a something that was thrown at the people as a bit of mockery. Oh, little Christs is what it meant. Well, here we have Peter saying, if you are a Christian and you are persecuted, you are in difficulty, you should not be ashamed, but glorify God. Then he goes on, for it is time for judgment to begin with the household of God. God is working, disciplining his family and his believers that we might be refined as gold. It is time for judgment to begin with the household of God. And if it begins with us first, Peter says, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? Good question. 
what a horrible future awaits those who scorn and set aside the Bible and the gospel which God freely offers his grace and his salvation as a gift. And if it is with difficulty that the righteous is saved, we are saved only because of the blood of Jesus Christ. It was no little thing, Peter is saying, that we are saved. What will become of the godless man and the sinner who knows nothing of the blood of Jesus Christ and the offer which God freely offers to this world in his kindness? Therefore, Peter concludes this fourth chapter, therefore, those also who suffer according to the will of God shall entrust. What we do is we entrust ourselves, entrust their souls to a faithful creator in doing what is right. What is right? Glorifying God, praising him in the midst of sorrow. In Acts chapter 16, what did Paul and Silas do when in Philippi? They were falsely accused and they were beaten with rods and then thrown into prison that night. They praised God and they lifted their voices to adore and to magnify him. That is for us as well, 2,000 years nearly later, that we might praise God. Those who also suffer according to the will of God shall entrust their souls, entrust your soul, dear friend, dear brother, dear sister, dear believer, entrust your souls to a faithful creator in doing what is right, and do that even today. Thank you for joining Pastor Barber today. Please watch for Faith to Live By again next Sunday at this same time on this same station. Until then, Faith to Live By prays that the peace of God will fill your heart and that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Pastor Barber would love to hear from you. The mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. 